The engineers behind this piston valve considered future needs from the very beginning. The valve itself comes in a range of sizes, from 150 mm to a whopping 2000 mm, making it adaptable to various applications. This versatility extends to its control system as well. Depending on the situation, the valve can be operated manually with a hand wheel or automatically through an electric, pneumatic, or hydraulic actuator. The foundation of this durable valve is its body, typically crafted from high-quality ductile iron. This iron boasts exceptional resistance to both corrosion and wear and tear. The casting process itself is an intricate dance. Years of experience and an intuitive understanding of the iron alloy are crucial. The pouring temperature must be precise, as is the entire process. Improper cooling can ruin the entire valve body. Once removed from the mold, the casting goes through a meticulous cleaning process. Burrs are removed, mold marks are ground away, and the entire body is meticulously finished on a lathe and vertical boring machine until no imperfections remain. The turning process, which can take hours or even days depending on the valve's size, requires a skilled touch. Cast iron has unique material properties that demand mastery. The finished body boasts a waterproof piston guide, constructed from high strength and highly corrosion resistant bronze. After the piston rods are securely welded in place, they are cloaked in a special protective paint. This layer is paramount, especially considering the valve's intended aquatic environment. The paint safeguards the parts from succumbing to corrosion over time ensuring the valve's smooth operation for years to come. This particular paint offers permanent resistance to salt water, making it an essential component. The next step involves installing the piston drive shaft, yet another component crafted from a special type of stainless steel. This critical shaft transmits the force from the motor ultimately leading to the automatic closing of the piston ring. The assembly process for this shaft demands the utmost precision and often requires the assistance of a crane for proper positioning. Once secured, stainless steel bolts and washers are used to finalize the installation.
Steel balls are the unsung heroes of our mechanical world, quietly ensuring smooth operation in everything from bicycles to bearings. There are various ways to craft these tiny spheres, but forging reigns supreme for its ability to produce balls of exceptional strength and durability. The process starts with a careful selection of raw material. Often, steel with a high manganese content is chosen for its ideal properties. This steel is then cut into manageable pieces called billets, ready for their transformation. Next comes a fiery bath. The billets are loaded into furnaces and heated to scorching temperatures, typically exceeding 850 degrees Celsius. This intense heat makes the steel more pliable, like hot clay, perfect for shaping. With the metal glowing, it's time for the real muscle. The heated billet is placed between specially designed dies, essentially two halves of a mold. Powerful hammers or presses squeeze the metal with tremendous force, coaxing it into a perfect sphere. The newly formed ball is still hot, but patience is key. It's cooled down in a controlled manner, sometimes with a pre-cooling stage around 650 minus 700 degrees Celsius before the big plunge. This plunge, known as quenching, involves rapidly submerging the hot ball in water or a similar coolant. This rapid cooling hardens the outer surface of the ball, creating a tough exterior. The story doesn't end there. The quenched ball undergoes another heating cycle, this time at a lower temperature, in a process called tempering. This crucial step helps to relieve internal stresses within the metal, enhancing its overall toughness. Finally, the forged steel ball may be subjected to finishing touches like grinding or polishing. These ensure the balls meet precise size requirements and achieve the desired surface smoothness. Witnessing this process firsthand is truly awe-inspiring. Every day, this factory hums with activity, churning out hundreds of thousands of steel balls. It's a testament to the power and efficiency of modern technology, showcasing the remarkable transformation of raw materials into these essential components of our mechanical world. You're absolutely right. For larger iron balls, the basic production process likely remains the same, just scaled up. They'll need heavier duty machinery and potentially different materials to handle the increased size and weight. It'll be interesting to see how this factory adapts its methods for these larger iron balls.
You've likely come across the term cold forging before, but what exactly is it and how does it work? Unlike hot forging, which involves heating the metal first, cold forging is a metalworking method that shapes the material at room temperature or even cooler. Imagine a powerful press pushing a piece of metal into a mold, much like squeezing clay. This mold, called a die, has the exact shape of the final part. The pressing tool, known as a punch, forces the metal to deform and fill every crevice of the die under immense pressure. This cold forging process is a high-speed production technique used to create a vast array of parts, particularly those that require strength, a smooth finish, and precise dimensions. Compared to hot forging, cold forging offers manufacturers several distinct advantages. First, it eliminates the need for heating the metal, saving on energy costs and production time. This process also yields parts with superior consistency and interchangeability. Additionally, cold forging results in a better surface finish with minimal contamination, reducing the need for post-processing. Tight dimensional control is another benefit ensuring parts conform to exact specifications. Cold forging even has the ability to influence the grain structure of the metal, creating parts with directional strength properties. However, cold forging isn't without its drawbacks. One concern is the introduction of residual stress into the metal, which can affect its long-term performance. Additionally, cold forging requires more force due to the metal's reduced ductility at room temperature. This necessitates the use of robust machinery and tooling compared to hot forging. While directional properties can be beneficial, they can also have unintended consequences if not carefully managed. Furthermore, the metal stock used in cold forging must be clean and free of imperfections on the surface. Finally, the strain hardening that occurs during cold forging can lead to a significant loss of ductility, potentially requiring intermediate kneeling steps to restore workability. The world of construction relies on the unsung heroes of assembly, fasteners like bolts, screws, and studs. But when it comes to colossal undertakings, Regular hardware just won't cut it. Enter the giants of the bolt world. Forged from the same principles as their smaller brethren, these behemoths require a slightly different approach to meet the demands of their immense size and the incredible forces they'll endure. The journey begins with high-grade steel, chosen for its strength and ability to withstand the coming transformation. Due to their scale, these starting points might necessitate specialized cutting tools like bandsaws or shearing machines. Next comes the shaping. 
Here, giant bolts turn to the fiery embrace of the forge. Intense heat, reaching temperatures hot enough to melt glass, softens the unforgiving steel, making it malleable. In this molten state, powerful hydraulic presses take over, pounding and sculpting the red-hot metal into the rough form of the bolt. Creating the signature threads on these giants is no small feat. Thread rolling comes to the rescue. This technique utilizes specially designed dies that press against the bolt, essentially rolling the threads onto its surface. It's a far more efficient and precise method than attempting to cut threads at such a monumental scale. Once shaped, the bolts enter a thermal gauntlet. Here, they undergo heat treatment to achieve their ultimate strength and hardness. This process might involve quenching, a rapid cooling technique, followed by tempering, a controlled reheating stage. Finally, after cooling, these titans of the bolt world undergo rigorous inspections, cleaning, and sometimes even a protective coating to shield them from the harsh realities of corrosion. It's important to remember that giant bolts are often custom made for specific projects. This means the exact process may have some variations depending on the final design. In some cases, additional machining might be needed to incorporate features like holes or grooves on the bolt's surface. The creation of these giants is a testament to human ingenuity and our ability to craft the tools necessary to build the world around us. The Journey of a Small Nail while less intricate than its screw or bolt cousins, still demands precision. It begins as a thick steel rod, fed into a machine that relentlessly pulls and stretches it. This transformation whittles the rod down to a long, smooth coil of thin wire. The wire then enters a high-speed belay. Grippers snatch it into place, while a hammering mechanism rhythmically shapes the head. Depending on the design, this head may be stamped or forged with decisive force.
Some nails might require a final flourish, grooves or threads rolled onto their surface for a tighter grip. The cleansing bath follows, erasing any remnants of their creation. For a touch of shine, some travel to a tumbling machine, where they emerge smooth and polished. To shield them from the perils of rust and corrosion, a final dip in a zinc bath awaits, bestowing upon them a protective, galvanized coat. Only then are they deemed complete. A final inspection ensures quality and size, followed by a meticulous counting and packaging. The once industrial rods are now ready to embark on their new purpose, a testament to the silent symphony of the nail-making process.